and I'm joined by Leila and Tom of The Damn Truth. How are you guys doing? Very good. How are you? Yeah, yeah, good guys. I mean, Sally, I missed you last time around uh, that you were over in the UK, but um, how was the shows for you? They look great. Yeah, it was awesome. We're, we weren't forgiving you, though. You're, we're very angry that you didn't make it. Just <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, it was, it was really great. It feels like every time we come on over, the shows get bigger and better. And there's more excitement and there's build up and like now now I'm ahead of the, the Glenn Hughes tour. I mean, you can only imagine how uh, how excited we are and how incredible these shows are gonna be. It's, uh, it's being you know, touring with a legend is uh, is something else. It's something else. I'm very excited. Yeah. But last time around in the UK it was great, man. It was all, all headlining shows and uh it's really fun to see the fan base growing and the tattoos and you know all the stuff. It's cool. I love. We love it. I work it, man. I just um, had a few friends over at Stillhouse, and it looked like Stillhouse was incredible. I sadly missed the shows. You know, I was prepping for my own festival, but still, yeah. it was a blast. Yeah, it was great. It was. There's something magical about you know being on top of the mountain and the fact that the the weather is changing on you from second to second. Like just before we went on, it was about. To- Horror. It was like insane. You could, it just felt the air was heavy with rain. The minute like we got on, the sun burst through and it was just this like love fest for 45 minutes. That was just incredible. You know, I felt like we, I, I really had a blast. I let everything go on that stage. It was so much fun. I love the vibe in that festival because you don't get to see so many uh, one stage festivals anymore. No. And I think it's really, it's really cool. It's like, you know, the, you get like a whole break from like the bands and it's like there's this there's a build up and there's like anticipation for the next show. It's like it makes a vibe, you know, mm-hmm. it's really cool. Like all the festivals that we play, I don't know, around here in North America or whatever. It's always like probably in the UK too this, these days, but like it's always like one band finishes, the other artist starts. It's like there's never a break. There's never like a moment where you're like, OK, I'm going to get a beer. I'm not going to miss anything. You know, it's like. You're constantly running to catch the next act. And it's really running. old school, like the one stage festival. I love that. Yeah, I love that as well, man. Like you say, a lot of them are that thing where you end up mi- either missing a band that you really want to see because they clash with another band that you love and you've got to make a choice or you then try and split the set and you can never get like that same vibe if you can only catch half a set of someone. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I, I'm bigs up to, I know the guys are still pretty well. And yeah, like you say, that any one day, one stage show where, you're going to get that build up. And I think you've got the time to sort of reflect on the set a bit more rather than just running around all day, trying to catch as much as you can. It's a bit more chilled out. That's, That's right. Yeah. It's really cool, man. Like that break that you get, like the half an hour or 40 minutes, I don't know, between sets. It's like, it really lets, not just the, the you know, the ears get a rest, but like also you get to just kind of hang out with the people around you as a festival goer, yeah. get to know the community and whatever. It's really cool. It's a good vibe. Well, f- fortunately for me, you are coming back so I can make it up to you. Well, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> can't wait to see you man yeah be good, good to see you guys and like you say touring glenn hughes i'm a yeah as a bass player massive influence on me glenn hughes so i'm looking forward to those shows um i thought was fortunate enough to meet him um a couple of years ago when he was headlining a festival i was working on stone dead festival uh great guy so i'm sure it'll be awesome shows and to do deep purple so as well is going to be pretty cool yeah. legendary burn man i love that i love that record can't go wrong with that record, man. And then due to phenomenal demand, you also had your own headline shows as well, which is really cool. <laughs> really, really cool. I mean, well, you, you know how like we're we're we we love to play. We do not like days off. We do not like to just sit around in the hotel room and and, and bicker. It doesn't work for us, <laughs> we, you know. So if we can if we can play every night, that's when we're the happiest. So it, it really worked out that we could fill in those uh, those gaps with some headline shows and uh, and yeah I think it's going to be awesome it's, uh, it's always great because I mean opening for Glenn is going to be incredible but I think it's only half hour 40 minutes tops and in our headline shows we get to you know do our our full Same set thing. and do an hour and a half and really really build 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 upon our uh, you know uh, I guess just like have I don't know it's always it always feels like like an hour and a half is is what we need to to get our get our point across. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately for me, it means I get to see you two nights in a row because you're doing with Glenn and Barry Simmons on the twenty first, and then in Norwich the following night up at the waterfront again. So you oh, know, 
poor guys go from not managing to avoid me on the last door to send me two times. And I can't wait. Love it. Love it. That's great. How, cool. How's the uh, Just Push play this year? Oh man, it was really good. Thank you, dude. Yeah, thanks for asking. Yeah, it went it went really well, man. Yeah, it was good. A lot of work as always, but yeah, it was it was worth it. Nah, oh, yeah. So sorry we missed it. It's like yeah, we just had another festival booked here that we had to rush home for, but we were already there. You know? Yeah, it's like, it was so annoying. It was so perfect. <laughs> it was almost perfect. You were literally there the day before. I know. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. But like the guy, the the festival here in. Uh, Quebec, he booked us like 12 months ago or something. Yeah. It looked like a great show, though. I saw some footage from it. It looked great. Yeah, we had a good time. Man. Yeah. Was cool. I was just wondering when you guys actually rest because when I've, you know, I've seen you guys a few times now and you always are on it. You know, you don't leave anything there. Everything seems to be left on the stage. And yet you're doing pretty much every night you're over here, you are playing. There's not many rest days. Yeah. No, that's, that's, I don't, I don't, like I said, we don't need to rest. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, this year has been particularly busy, but uh, it's good, it's exciting, you know, it's like, uh, we, can, we we did like, uh, what was it, five five weeks in Europe, and then we came to the UK, and we did a couple, like three more weeks or something, so about two months, this summer, we were out on the road, we came back, and we had a bunch of festival book here, a bunch of festivals booked here, so we're running around, and you know, like in Canada, it's a bit... Like the distances are a bit, a bit bigger, you know, so it's like a lot of driving and a lot of like just being on the road and all that, which is fine too. But then we kind of finished those festival dates and came back home for a couple of days and flew out to Vancouver, which is on the other side of Canada from where we live. And we did a week in the studio with Bob and uh, came back because we, we were headlining a festival that night that we came back. So it's just been kind of not, nonstop, you know. How is it going on with Bob? I saw some statuses you put up saying you now you're working on the new record and everything. How's that all going? It's uh, it's it's, it's uh, mind blowing. Like working with this man, it really is. Like I feel like last time we only we got like four days with him because mm -hmm. of the whole COVID insanity, um, and those four days were life changing. And then like you think, okay, we know what we're going for. We know, we know we got his expertise. We know it. But, but like this time around, it was almost like we, we have a new best friend. Like that's what it felt like. The guy is just so excited about being involved and excited about the songs and excited to make them the best they can be. So those six days were not enough. Like halfway through, he was like, okay, well, let's book, let's book November when you guys get back from October to continue and dive deeper in and, it was just, it's such an honor to be able to work with him and like just, just get a glimpse of how records are supposed to be made, you know? <laughs> it feels, you know, it's like you're supposed to spend time with the producer. You're supposed to work on the things you're supposed to. It's not just like go and press record. That's not what, what it is. It, it's so much more. It's like, it's bringing the songs to another level and, and making them the best they possibly can be. And it's, it's incredible. So it's like you come with, with the song and it, changes on its axis three times by the time it's it's finished and and then it's not finished yet because now we're gonna listen to it four times now oh my god we can actually make it better when we come back in november so it's, it's very exciting it's very exciting that's one is, yeah. the, is the songwriting process or time you've had for songwriting change since like now nowhere or do you think you still work the same pattern um it's hard to say like well uh, i think um uh... As artists, like uh, I, I talk about it with my friends a lot too, uh, that are in other bands or you know producing records or whatever. It's hard to like be objective to that question because it's uh, when we when we wrote now or nowhere, it was really about the time and place in our lives at that particular moment. And I feel like that this record is about the, this time and place <laughs> that we're in right now. Yeah. So it's like it's hard to say. I guess times have changed a little bit, but like, would it reflect really on the sound of the music? Probably, yeah, a little bit, but I, I, we can't do anything else really, you know? It's like, you write about what you feel, about the, the, the stuff that you experience in life, and uh, we try to be true to that, you know? So it's like mm -hmm. the experiences that we had, you know, throughout the last few years and whatever, that's kind of the stuff that we write about, you know? Makes sense. So you saying you're going back in the studio in November when you come back off of this tour. Have you got a, an end goal in mind from roughly when you want them to start releasing new music? I guess it's going to be next. Oh, well, there's actually going. To, there's actually a little surprise uh, coming in the next few weeks. The first, uh, I don't know, we can tell you. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> in a few weeks, 
There'll be a new single. There's oh, a brand wow. new single. Yeah, the first uh, first thing that we worked on with Bob uh, is gonna is gonna come to life. Uh, hopefully on radio while we're in the UK. Yeah, that that's gonna come out mid October. Like we don't know if this song or a single that's coming out will be a part of a record, but. For now, well, for now, it's just we're kind of releasing it as a standalone single, yeah. Oh, so it's going to be a standalone single, then it might not, be, it might be separate to the album itself. We don't know yet. We shall see. Much. We shall see. Yeah. Ah, cool. So, I mean, this interview isn't going to go out for a couple of weeks because I'm off on holiday at the end of this week. So it's probably yeah. going to come out around about the time you guys are over here, actually, maybe the week before. Yeah. That's, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's out well. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what can you tell us about the single? Bear in mind, there's going to be a couple of weeks. You know, where did it come from? You know, what was, is there, have you got the song in mind that you're going to release a single, or is there a few options that you're working on in the minute? Oh, no, there, there's a song. There's a song. There's a song. It's, it's done. It just got, we just got it back from mastering. Oh, nice. Um, which also is an insane story. Uh, it's, God, it's just uh, we're not going to get into that. Yeah, it's a little bit too long. Next time we'll leave that for the <laughs> next interview. But it was it was mastered in the UK. It sounds fantastic. Um, uh, it was very it's very exciting. It's very fresh. Again, it's one of those. You know, we brought in a song and and not, not in our like wildest dreams did we think that this is the way it's going to end up. Like it was stripped down and turned around and. And I, I, I don't know. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think it's really fun. It's going to be really fun to perform live as well. So uh, that's, uh, I'm looking forward to that, to adding a, a new song to the set. You, you planning on playing that one live when you come over here on? Week? Yeah, for sure. Most definitely. For sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, we, uh, we had this, uh, we had this kind of a demo that I made for it and, uh, and uh, you know it had a certain vibe to it, but then you know when you get to the studio, the thing is with with, with people, I don't know people with Bob, it's that he's a very much a feel oriented guy, you know. Yeah. So he feels stuff on his spot, and then he gets really excited. We get really excited. And it's kind of like a vicious yeah. cycle, and we kind of work really, really, really fast. And we put something together and sometimes it really works and sometimes it doesn't. And in this case, it really worked, you know, and it, it kind of like took its own, uh, uh, it's, it took its own shape, like uh, very, and it was very different than uh, what I uh, envisioned, envisioned in yeah. the first place. But it, I think it's better and I think it's cooler, you know. Yeah. Cool. And it's maybe something that we as a band wouldn't have come to uh, without Bob, you know, yeah. without his influence. So it's kind of cool, man. That's cool, man. Right. Yeah, how excited you guys are. So I'm looking forward to hearing it, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun little track, you know. It's nothing too heavy or serious. It's just fun. Exactly. <laughs> Rock, music should be fun at the end of the day. And, you know, I know there's certain songs that should be, have more serious subjects, of course, but it should be fun as well at the end of the day. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so how, well, yeah. how involved does Bob get on the kind of like the writing process or the structuring of it? Is he there just to try and pull it out of you? Does he get involved on a more deeper level or...? Well, I mean, I guess like um, when we when we start a song, we play it acoustic guitar, vocal in like the control. In, in the control room. We yeah. just I just perform it to him. And for me, it's always like I'm excited. I'm belting top of my voice, giving the best performance of my life because I'm singing in front of Bob. So I'm trying to also give him like the the best picture of what I'm feeling and my emotion. And he's got the lyrics in front of him. And like immediately within like a few moments. He'll be like, you know, maybe maybe underlining certain words and in his head, he's already saying, OK, this I need, you know, I need you to accent this and maybe we'll change this word for that word. So this is where he gets like into the nitty gritty of, let's say, the lyrics or the idea or the, you know, what am I, what are we actually trying to say? Um, he's I don't think he's ever changed in terms of like, you know, there's never been like big chord changes or like he hasn't hasn't written like a part in no. the song. I think mainly all the parts are there, but it's more like arranging them. Sorry, I keep speaking. Look, there's a there's a thing that we never experienced with any other producer before. So it's like with Bob, the process really already started six months ago. Mm -hmm. So he wants he he asks for demos and songs, even if they're recorded really badly. And it's only really when uh, he felt that we have really strong songs is when 
we should come into the studio. There's no waste. We, he doesn't want to waste his time. He doesn't want to waste, waste our time and money because it's so expensive, yeah. obviously. So the process has started digitally, you know, before. And it's like, when we showed up to the studio, we already had like bangers. I told them. <laughs> so yeah, so the songs that kind of like weren't finished or maybe you weren't as good kind of didn't make the, the, the cut, you know? And the songs that did make the cut are, uh, would, I don't think they needed to be rewritten or anything like that. It's more with the arrangement stuff, you know? Yeah, just taking them up to that next level and just polishing them, so to speak, rather than actually restructuring yeah. them. Sometimes just like one extra kick drum somewhere <laughs> changes the whole the whole vibe of the song. It's unbelievable. And it's like, the, that's the kind of ears he has where he can like either add, add a kick drum or take one off. And it's like, oh my God, the whole flow has changed. It's, it's incredible. It is, isn't it? It's like even like an accent on how you hit the drum, not unless something the drum beat, it can completely transform the song. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Are, you guys, are you guys working at the warehouse again? And are you back in that studio? Oh, man. I thought it was. Yeah, that's a trip. That's a trip and a half. That yeah. It's like a little uh, haven inside madness because the area it's in in Vancouver is very, very dark and dismal. And there's a lot of crackheads all around for some reason like that is the where they where they congress to all. It's like it's like the one place in Canada that doesn't have extremely, extremely cold weather. So it seems like if 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 street people have like migrated there, they stay and uh, they stay throughout the year and it's, it's very depressing and it's very dark and it's very surreal to sort of be in this haven and around us there's a lot of of, of this and it's um like addiction and and, and so it, it, it has a very very um powerful presence this place uh within within Vancouver it's very sad and very very uh, like the first few days it's very disorientating but we you kind of you stay in your bubble like you don't you don't really go out much uh, from the studio anywhere we're, we're there you know so uh, from one time to time you kind of kind of catch catch a glimpse out the window and you're like oh my god where are we like what's happening it's very strange it's a very surreal place uh, in canada uh, you find that feeds yeah. into, into the sort of vibe of the, the recording at all if you're soaking that I, well I, I think it just puts us in a very vulnerable state like we're uh, we're at the mercy of our emotions and of our psyches and it, we're just in a in a spot where this is this is life right now. This is exactly where we are and where we're supposed to be. And things around you they they influence you and they affect you. And it, I think it, if anything, it just makes you more sensitive. Mm -hmm. And that 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 definitely opens something up when you're recording. Yeah. Well, Py looked quite happy with Brian Adams' pre uh, precision bass. I saw his but <laughs> I mean, I'm oh, yeah. happy as well. But you know. <laughs> Yeah, that was just one of the pieces that uh, he played there. I mean, there was, uh, that was Brian Adams' bass, but there was also a 56P bass that Bob owns. Nice. So that was there too. And, you know, there was a B15 amp and there was uh, an SVT, obviously, from the 70s and all kinds of cool yeah. toys. And uh, not to mention the guitars. <laughs> you get it, yeah. But that's really <laughs> what everybody heard of. <laughs> <laughs> So you, well, it was all about PY playing there, Tom. Did you get to play on anything that you hadn't played before, Bob? Yeah, there was a ton. I'm not going to go into like all the details here, but like I would just say that, for example, there's this really rare Marshall amp. Um, if you ever seen one, I think it, it is a Plexi. It's from the late '60s, but uh, it says JTM on it in a box black lettering, and you can't see them anywhere for sale because. Uh, the rumor is, or the, the legend is, that ACDC bought every single one of them in the world because that's the only amps that they use. That's the amps that they like. This uh, particular model with the JTM in black, whatever. And because ACDC uh, record all the records in that studio in the warehouse, they just they love that place. Um, Malcolm Young actually uh, gifted Brian Adams one of these amps, and oh, it's cool. in the studio there. So. Uh, one of the eight amps that I uh, that were plugged in for me so to play at all times was that amp, and it was just inc just an incredible sounding That's cool. and feeling amp, and it's just just to play through like Malcolm Young's amp is just pretty fucking cool. Yeah, to be fair, yeah, it doesn't get much cooler than that, does it really? Um, yeah, and I'm gifted to Brian Adams from Mal Young. That's just yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Enough stamp of approval, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so cool.
So, so cool, yeah, that's cool. So what does the rest of the, I was going to ask you guys what the rest of the year and into 2024 20, hangs out for you, but it looks like you're as busy as always between the tour and then creating the new record and everything else and the single coming out. Oh, yeah, that's right. I think oh, yeah. maybe hopefully in December for the holidays, we'll get a couple of weeks off. Get some time with family and <laughs> some nor yeah. normalizing. <laughs> yeah, you know, just like even just seeing some friends, you know, I'm not even yeah. saying anything big like vacation or anything, but I'm just saying like hanging just out. hanging out with your buddies, you know, it's like yeah. having a party or uh, you know, well, they'll, they'll be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I've been with man of work you guys have been doing all year. So it's, yeah, it's gonna be nice to be able to just chill out and like you say, hang out with some friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 do nothing for a little bit in December, yeah. and then start all over again. Because you know, it's like you you need those moments because they also influence the way you write music, and you know, I mean, people always assume that you write mostly on tour and stuff, but tour is not real life. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a weird version of, I don't even know what, you know, <laughs> of traveling, you yeah. know? So it's like, you don't really get to experience life on the road. It's like a different version of it. And to write music that's real and it's from the heart and whatever, you need to live a little bit too, you know? Yeah. You need to have like normal kind of day-to-day -day life. You have to fight with your wife a little bit and you have to fucking, you know, dish that out at your really friends. Good, or... <laughs> that led to a really good song, so that works, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You need that. <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for coming on again because you are now both officially the most interview guests I've ever had on the show. Because you've now, <laughs> yeah, I love it, love it. Thank you, Lee. No, always no. a pleasure. Always a pleasure chatting to you guys. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks, uh, both for the yeah. Apex news and then obviously for yourselves at the waterfront. You guys know how this this works. Um, you've been, like I say, on a few times now, but um, I tend to go for a Now or Nowhere track at the beginning, but I thought I'd flip it up a bit uh, and play Heart is Cold at the beginning of the interview. That's cool you do. Nice. And uh, yeah, but what song of yours would you like us to play at the end of the interview? I would say uh, if, if you're staying in the devilish folk territory, it would be cool if you can maybe outro the show uh, with the outro of uh, devilish folk would be cool. Yeah, okay, man, I'll look there and we'll do that. That'd be cool. All right, well, thanks for your time as always, guys. Good to chat to you. Good Thank to see you, you man. So see you in a few weeks. See you in a few, yeah, few weeks. See you in a weeks, guys. Take care. And, uh, yeah, stay Take safe. Take care. Have a great vacation. Cheers, <laughs> man. See you soon. Bye. Bye.